Ollie. Hello. We are here. We are. We haven't been here for a while. We haven't. But I have something to say. My crocs are in sports mode. Your crocs are in sport mode because we've been very busy, Oliver Edwards Cave. What have we been up to? Well, I did announce two quite crazy and amazing career highlights because you are now looking at the ambassador of Blind Barbie. The most popular doll in the world now has a long white cane. <laughs> um, audio description. I'm holding her up. If anyone's on YouTube right now, you can see her in her box. She's got Braille on her packaging. She's holding a long white cane. She has uh, a similar eye gaze to me. Well, one of my eyes anyway. It, uh, as she's slightly looking upward. What a queen. She's got sunglasses on her head to reflect that some people in my community have light sensitivity. Um... And you can take them on and off, which means it's really cool because some of us don't wear sunglasses. I don't really wear sunnies. I do sometimes, but you, it depends you, on the you day. You wear your sunnies for style, my darling. I do, darling. It's uh, really cool. And sometimes light sensitivity. But as you guys know, I don't really have much light perception these days. It's only the occasional um, day where I do. So that's why I wear my sunnies. And then she's got her high heels on because Queen's got a sleigh and she's got gorgeous tactile clothing, including an easy to take off and on like um, Velcro bits on her clothes. I just, I, I'm still excited. Several weeks later, still can't believe I'm the face of her. Yeah. It is it's, so cool. It's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> and um, what's the second piece of news? Well, darling, do you want to say? Because you were Are running you around strutting? Copenhagen Fashion Week, weren't you? I was, with Miss Mo, <laughs> feeding her bananas. You were. So, basically, me and Bob's, we flew to Copenhagen and me and Miss Molly had the first ever picture of a guide dog on a Vogue runway, which is incredible. I think, as far as I'm aware, we're the first ever guide dog picky and blind model pairing to have a Vogue runway moment. I just literally blows my mind. It is very cool. <laughs> it's insane. Um, and I'm super proud of Anna Cafone from Hair and Care. She's just my queen, my everything. We talk all the time and we're just two women of the same soul. Two pieces of a puzzle, aren't we, Bobs? You are. And very passionate about making... The world more accessible yeah, she's for a, people in regards to hair. We do, yeah, hair and, and, fashion. and fashion and beauty just in general in my case. And um, her dad actually lost his vision, but he's passed. But Anna was so, so super close to him. And obviously, you know, she has lived experience of living with someone who, um, with sight loss. And obviously I have lived experience of actually living it. So um, her charity, Hair and Care, is just amazing. She's a hairstylist by trade. She's actually La actually Lana Del Rey's hairstylist. Um, and just super excited to be on this journey with her because we're making moves and we're not stopping. So, yeah, that's, that's super cool. How was your journey in Copenhagen Fashion Week? Oh my week? gosh, well... It was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it? Do you want it? to tell them about your trousers, love? Oh, very considerate. <laughs> very considerate, darling. Very mindful, very demure. Anyone else seen that? I Yeah, if you don't know that trend, definitely Google it. But yeah, Ollie was very demure because what happened to your trousers? Well, so first day went swimmingly. So we were there for three days. And the first day was the rehearsal. And it was all fantastic. We were doing ever so well. And I was filming around doing all sorts of acrobatics to get my shots. Not really, I was bending down a little bit, but you know. And well, then, you've got your new fancy down cameras now. We've upped our filming game. So. Well, it's the same cameras that you guys are watching. Well, it's the one that you're watching Lucy on right now. Yeah. But we've kind of got a full on rig for it. But And there's other bits and bobs, but yeah, go yes. on. But as I bent down, I've had a small rip happen. <laughs> I had a... And uh, I checked and it was all fine. Uh, <laughs> It's all good. But then we got back to the hotel later. Now, remember, guys, this this was a three-day trip. So it was really only two days. Can but. I just say, it just just for your guys' no, like, knowledge, Ollie only packed two pairs of trousers. Well, yeah, that's where I was about to go with this. <laughs> okay. I, I am not a fan of overpacking. And I thought, you know what? It's two because pairs of trousers wife overpacks, do. just yes. saying. We turn up with a 27 <laughs> kg suitcase for a four-day right, trip. All right, darling, don't shade me. Carry on. Yeah, yeah, passenger princess. You do you, I'll do me. <laughs> boo boo. <laughs> but as I bent down to get the SD card out of the, the camera, 
I had a, a great big rip. <laughs> Can I just and say? And then suddenly my butt cheek felt cold. <laughs> Can I say though, these trousers. They were he brand loves, new. He loves them so much. I've, I've got actually got I've got another pair of them on today. Right now, yeah, literally. I was going to say I bought like four pairs for him. Well, actually, I bought two pairs: one in charcoal grey, and then another in I think like a tan colour for his birthday in June. And then he was like, "I love them so much." So I bought him two more pairs. Thank you. Hashtag ASOS. And I think they were fine. Mm. I just your bum looks gorgeous in everything. Sorry, probably too TMI for a podcast, but I think it just <laughs> was booty popping, and that's it fine. Was babe. Booty popping, and <laughs> doing too many squats at the gym. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it just tore you, yeah. this huge <laughs> line down my left butt cheek. <laughs> but then you took a photo of it and then sent it to your family group chat. I did indeed. <laughs> they were all laughing. They did. But the only problem was, I brought two pairs of trousers, but the second pair, they were just some black jokers. Yeah. So um, not very demure. Not very but, mindful. But very considerate, because uh, I didn't turn up with <laughs> some trousers with a hole in. Well, it wasn't that considerate, because I feel I that... had boxes with fried eggs on them. <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> Where did you get those from? You bought them for me. Did I? <laughs> Primark. Where? That must have been years ago. <laughs> this is the thing, guys. Ollie hasn't changed size since you since he was like seventeen. Because evidently my booty has got bigger. Well, everything he puts on is just beautiful. Like he could wear a bin bag and it'd be like it'd be sick. He'd be sickeningly hot. And um, I've probably said that before in a podcast, but. Uh, yeah, those fried eggs don't remember the purchase. I think it was like a little ha ha ha. I think joke. I've got some ones with toast on, some avocados. Oh, I think I bought them you when we first started, like no. well, a year into our relationship. No, no, no. These are much more recent. Are these, they? Are, these are about a year old. This is why I just I I literally forget patterns. Like you have to with me like, attribute some sort of fashion fashion darling to an event in my life don't you otherwise yes. I just forget that I get well, now it now you'll forever remember the fried eggs <laughs> well I will yeah <laughs> fried so, yeah, egg gate <laughs> that wouldn't have been very considerate to show all the people no, at the fashion show that was what I was going to say and before you left fielded me with the eggs <laughs> um, you you basically did turn up in joggers to a Copenhagen fashion week however they were nice joggers yeah, they were. And, and you did they have were black. You... And I was wearing a black top. And as long as I held the camera, That's true. I was cameraman chic. And to be fair, you were wearing your Adidas Gazelles, which kind of elevated the look slightly. It did. So I was looking very Jamil, <laughs> very cameraman. <laughs> no, you weren't very mindful. <laughs> anyway, we need to stop with that reference. People won't get it if they haven't seen the trend. Um... Okay. It's on TikTok, guys. We're gonna. We've got some questions from you guys that you've submitted this week. Yes, you emailed to our help at lucyedwards.com. I know it's so cool, and um, because we haven't been on for a while, like sorry about that, guys. Like life is just lifing at the moment, um, and a lot's happening, which we're not complaining about. But yeah, we, it's um, busy. It's it's crazy busy, and I think to be honest, we're going to be doing the podcast more in seasons, so you will see more sporadic podcasts. But we're not going anywhere. Like even still, if it's yeah. even if it's like one every other month, I'm sure it won't be. But yeah, you've still got us, and we're still going to be updating you on. But I'd never marry a blind woman. But we may change up the format. I don't know. It's it's very fluid at the moment. But bear with us, and um, let's roll the titles. This is But I'd Never Marry a Blind Woman. A show where we answer all the questions you are too afraid to ask about dating, marriage, and finding love with a disability. I'm Lucy Edwards Cave, author of my book, Blind Not Broken, and you can pre-order my brand new children's book, Ella Jones vs. The Sunsteener, wherever you get your books from right now. Presenter and blind wife of... Me, Ollie Edwards Cave, her sighted husband and the man usually behind the camera. On this podcast, we... Your fave interabled couple. Debunk the stereotypes of dating with a disability. Dive behind the inspiration porn headlines and unpack your relationship dilemmas. So when people say... But I'd never marry a blind woman. You can answer. Well, I would. <laughs> but I'd never marry a blind woman. Right, email number one, my darling. Hello, hello. So this is from Sonia. Hello, Ooh, Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Thank you so much for writing into us. So, 
the the title of this is how do I know if I'm engaging in inspiration porn? Mm. So, hi. I just wanted to say I love your content, and as a non-disabled person, I'm always looking for ways to ensure I'm not accidentally being ableist. I think I'm reasonably well adjusted on disability, and I watch a lot of disabled content creators like yourselves. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's super cool. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the idea of inspiration porn. For example, I love the content of blind surfer Pete Gustin. Oh, we love him too. How did you? Was that a good voice impression? Pete Gustin. I don't know. He's got a very good voice. He's got a way. Pete, not, can, not, can that you I love you, not that I don't love your voice, but Pete Gustin is like. He, his voice is top notch. Yeah, it is. But ordinarily, I wouldn't care about someone surfing. But because he's blind, and therefore surfing is harder to achieve, I feel really uplifted seeing him achieve those goals. He's also really cool and funny, but that's besides the question. So, am I being disrespectful? I worry that because I'm inspired by his blindness, I'm engaging in ableism in some way, but I don't really understand the nuance of the topic. Ordinarily, I wouldn't care about something like surfing or traveling on the subway, but the fact that not only can someone do these things that I'm scared of, but also with physical limitations, sometimes acting against them, makes me feel like maybe I could do it too and should find it easy. I'm so sorry if any of this sounds disrespectful, oh, but I'm trying to educate her. myself in a way that's more down to earth by asking you guys. Okay. Thank you. Sonia, you are amazing. <laughs> Just that's number one. Number two, this is the right place to air your question because me and Ollie are so open with these different things Mm -hmm. but obviously this is just mine and Ollie's opinion so I did want to just flag that we are only one disabled person and one interabled couple on a mission to try and debunk these things hopefully you can listen to our opinion but also listen to other people's opinions too Oliver over to you Oh, okay. So I'm leading the charge here. You are. Okay, no pressure as the uh, able-bodied one of our relationship. That's fine. Okay, so I think on the surface... This isn't inspiration porn. Yes. Would you agree? I agree. I think I initially thought, oh, she loves Pete Gustin. So do we. Mm. You know, I don't think I care about surfing unless Pete was doing it or unless someone that I really, you know, enjoyed watching was doing it. But I think you're drawn to Pete not only because of the reasons that you've said, but because he's just a cool guy. Yeah. And also I would preface here that I think inspiration porn, as we sort of previously defined it, is about doing sort of regular tasks. So sort of like getting up and making a cup of tea. If you're finding that inspirational, then that's sort of on the inspiration porn side because you're kind of patronizing somewhat uh, a person who has a disability and going, oh, if they can do it, I can do it too. Because it's a really simple task. When it's something that's actually difficult, like surfing, Or like the stuff that the Paralympians do, where it's actually someone's trained really hard. They're putting like... So much effort. If you would find it inspirational anyway, if if you remove the disability. disability. Exactly. Then I don't think you're playing with inspiration porn. I agree. And I think, you know, you also, it's all relative to your experience, right? So you're saying that you would feel nervous about going on public transport. You would feel nervous about surfing. These things are all individual to you. You know, there's some people out there that maybe are able bodied or disabled, whoever you are, you may find these different um, things challenging for your own reasons. And that's okay, disabled or not. But the reason that you're watching Pete, I think, as you said in your email, is because he is a cool guy, first and foremost. That is number one. He is drawing you in with his personality, with his charm, with his ability to make really cool videos. Don't forget his voice. And his voice, of course. Um, <laughs> and then secondary, you think that it's cool that he's surfing. I personally think that you may, if you find someone else who is just as compelling as Pete, you would find them inspirational for surfing too because it's something that you personally either want to give a go or you're curious about. You just didn't know it yet. And that's what YouTube's amazing for. It can always give you and serve you content that is just super cool that you didn't even know that you wanted to do or even knew that you wanted to know or knowing the no, 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 no. I feel like I'm in no exception. But do you know what I mean, Ollie? I think it's just so complex. But I think from reading your email you're coming you're coming from a pure place and it sounds like you have a pure heart and also curiosity is an inspiration porn being curious about how a disabled person does something doesn't mean that you're playing into inspiration porn like if you never 
had that curiosity, you'd probably never find out. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't have that curiosity, then you'd probably just perpetuate your own ableist thoughts. Not that saying that you have ableist thoughts at all, but the reason that we're in this situation as a whole within our cultural landscape that, you know, views disability as less than or others people with disabilities. The reason that we're here is because there aren't allies like you, Sonia, out there um, that really are interested in the way of life that we kind of want to forge ahead with. We we want to be independent. We want to show that we are, you know, as I say, blind, not broken. And there's people out there like you that are really getting that messaging and understanding that, you know, it's it's not okay to other disabled people. It's not okay to call us inspirational um, for just getting out of bed. But what it is okay to do is learn and this is a safe space. And I'm so glad you asked us. <laughs> And email number two. Come on down. Come on down. Thank you so much, Sonia, by the way. That was an amazing question. And we hope that we helped you in some way. Yes. Next one. So we've got Josephine. Josephine, hello. hello Thank you Josephine. for emailing. It says podcast question. So, hi, Lucy. I love your podcast. It gives me so much insight into disabled people's perspectives, which Aww. I think everyone should have a bit of. Oh, that's cool. I have a little dilemma. I want to... I wanted to ask you about. It doesn't matter if you decide not to discuss it on the pod, but then I would love to hear your opinion as an answer to my email. Aww. I live in Switzerland and at my school. It is traditional for all graduating classes to organise a trip together without teachers right after graduation. Usually they go abroad, but stay in Europe. For example, France, Italy, Spain or the UK. My class will be graduating in 2025, so there's still a lot of time to go. But I always like to plan ahead and there is a problem we will be facing. So, a boy in my class uses a wheelchair. I don't know what exact medical condition he has, but I believe he is paralysed below his hips. He has an adult at school accompanying him every day and assisting him with things like taking out his pencil case out of his backpack, he can't reach it from the wheelchair, or helping him use the bathroom. He is well integrated in the class and has one close friend that assists him too. As he is part of the class, obviously he'll be joining us on our trip abroad next summer. But thinking about the trip, a lot of questions arise. We want to travel on a low budget, so obviously I would have suggested a youth hostel. But youth hostels usually don't have accessible bathrooms, for example, which in this case he would need. Then what would we do during the day? Maybe one day we would do some sightseeing, which would be very possible for him. But other times we would love to go swimming, biking or play beach volleyball. Those are all activities our class loves doing, but he can't join, unfortunately. This is where I'm coming for advice from you. Do you have any cities or places you can recommend that are possible on a low budget, but also have inclusive activities that he can participate in? We'd love to include him as much as possible and still do things that are fun for the whole class. Super interesting. Love you guys, Josie. Aww, thank you so much for asking us. I think because we talk about accessible travel so much, we hope that we can give you a sort of roundabout answer, even though... I am not a wheelchair user myself. I'm hoping that we can give you some pointers. Yes. So number one, I think, ask him. Mm. That is always my advice for most things in life. Communication is the most amazing thing. It's got, got me through so many dark times, so many, you know, mental health problems. And, you know, communicating with my lovely husband here has allowed us to kind of go from strength to strength in trying to navigate a world that isn't made for me. Yeah. And sometimes it leads to a slightly awkward conversation, but it's better to have that tiny bit of an awkward conversation than someone feel left out or even feel really upset afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's better to address it sooner than later. Yeah. I think overall as a whole, for me, this is my personal opinion again, so you definitely need to consult that your class member um, and maybe even just like sit down with him and his personal assistant or friend or whatever. Maybe you can start with, you know, what activities do you like doing just day to day? Um, and have you thought about doing activity like any more activities? Do you feel adventurous in that way? Because it may be that he just isn't that interested um, in the things you're suggesting anyway. And they're, might be other things that you can do but for me I always go on holiday we go on a 
annual trip actually me and my school friends were still all really close there's is there like 10 of us ollie uh 10 yeah of us 10 of or us. 12 of us there's loads of us and we always say right you know we'll hire out an airbnb and we'll go somewhere in england and we all kind of chip in and we go once a year and it's usually like a week and you know some of the time i can't do the activities but we've usually had a conversation beforehand and either adapted it because we've got lots of different activities that we can do. Or I've just said, don't worry, I'll sit this one out, guys. Me and Ollie Bobs will, you know, go for another walk or we'll go, and do, our own go thing. and do our own thing. And I am completely and totally OK with that. And I think because I'm so happy in my own skin, knowing that, yeah, there are things in the world that maybe able-bodied people want to do without me uh, it doesn't mean they don't love me any less um and they're not thinking about me because they absolutely are because they said are you you know you have to do that we're going to do this and I'm like yeah crack on amazing um it doesn't mean that they can't still do that and I can adjust to them as well but equally there are probably I mean 80% of the time where we're like right We've got to make all this accessible. It's amazing. Um, how are we going to do this? And we make games that just aren't accessible at all work, don't we often, Ollie? Yeah, we adapt it. We'll either team up in teams or we'll adjust the cards so they've got Braille on. Yeah. Or, or like the pieces or you'll have like digital dice. There's a whole bunch There's of things so in our case. many things. So, I mean, expanding this out, I guess, into... Well, swimming, biking problem. or playing beach volleyball. Yeah, swimming, biking or playing beach volleyball. There are probably tools out there that your classmate knows about. Yeah, I To imagine allow him to do all of these things. Biking, definitely. There's plenty. There's all sorts of wheelchair adaptations for biking. Yeah, there and is. And then I've seen quite a lot of people who are wheelchair users swim. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a whole category at the Paralympics, for example. Exactly. They might just need different adaptations in the pool. But honestly, it's such an accessible sport and quite low impact as well. Um, and beach volleyball. Now, we don't I, I don't know about your classmates specific disability, but there are definitely things that I can do with my disability to adapt to beach, beach volleyball. Um, you know, is it that your wheelchair user classmate has different treads on his wheels that allow him to go on the sand. Or maybe just take the beach volleyball and take it to a court. Yeah. Or, you know, you can do so many things and still have the exact amount of fun that you were intending to have. And on the same budget, it's just about adaptations and just being prepared for it, which it sounds like you want to be if yeah. it's in 2025. There's also plenty of travel companies out there who specialise in disability. Like we know of, for example, in the blind sphere, there's Travel Eyes. Mm -hmm. Shout um, out to Amar Latif. But I imagine there are similar uh, travel companies for people who are wheelchair users. Mm -hmm. So definitely. I'd definitely get in touch with them. Maybe he already knows of them. Like I imagine he's probably been on holiday, holiday with his family. Mm -hmm. So get in touch, see if they have any options for affordable youth hostels there might even be youth hostels who specialize in it yeah definitely and if there's not a youth hostel often if you are in europe or in the uk definitely there is always going to be accessible bathrooms within hotels and yes they are a bit more pricey but us as disabled people we often know that you know for us to have adaptations it is a bit more expensive like the cost of having a disability is more expensive unfortunately mm. and you know is it about your classmate um you know having the ad adaptation they need to be just as equal to you guys and have a, just an amazing trip just book the hotel you know maybe across the road the youth hostel can be opposite and you can meet up and you know there's all where there is a will there is a way. That's there what I always is. say. Also, like once you sort of get out of the major cities, I don't know, at least in the UK, like a, a hotel in Cornwall is nowhere near as expensive as a hotel in central London. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, it's about throughout this whole process, not being othering, you know, not kind of telling the disabled person that they can't do X or Y or assuming. Um, it's about just asking them, you know, what do you want to do? Um, how do you deal with this? Maybe there's a way we can all get around it. And, you know, being a team in all of this and, you know, there's, there's some things that are just 
for me completely inaccessible but and or and or I don't really find enjoyable so I will just be like no I'm not doing that (laughs) it's just that's not within my boundary girl but um you can have that combo fingers crossed yeah so yeah the verdict is talk to him yeah (laughs) it is but thank you so much for your question Thank you so much for watching and listening to our podcast. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. We are so excited it's to so nice have to... recorded. And we've got one next week as well. We do. And it's so nice to actually have your like comments here. I know. It's super cool that you guys email. So if you do want to email, please, your dilemmas, email them to help at lucyedwards.com. That's help at lucyedwards.com. H-E-L-P at lucyedwards.com. Yes. And we'll see you next week for a new one. But after that, we hope very soon. We're always going to be here (laughs) somewhere on the interwebs. We'll be somewhere around. (laughs) You'll see us on short form. You might see us on long form. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye, Bye, guys.